Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the Avid Tent Camper. Over the last five years, I've posted around 20 videos describing our camp kitchen, but these videos only showed part of our kitchen and showed a lot of equipment that we no longer use today. And so I decided to post another video to show you our current camp kitchen. Hope you enjoy it. Let me begin with our kitchen shelter. We live in North Alabama where it rains on the average about one inch every week through the year. And we frequently camp in the Smoky Mountains where it rains on the average every other day. And so we need a covered shelter where we can cook our food and eat our meals without getting wet. And so I have almost always set up a covered shelter in my campsite for the last 50 years. At first I just set up a tarp, but I realized that the tarp did not drain water as well as I would like, and it did not provide full protection from blowing rain. So I redesigned the roof line to drain water better, and I added sidewalls to provide more protection from the wind. Just recently, a friend gave us a screen room, but I wasn't sure that I would like it or not. But after using it a couple of times, I realized that it drains water well. It is relatively easy to set up, and most importantly, it does not require guidelines in the middle of the high traffic areas of the campsite. To make it more comfortable, we've added a string of rope lights on the ceiling and five fabric shower curtains around the edge to block the wind. This particular brand might be hard to find, but Clam, Gazelle, and Cabela's all make great screen rooms that could be used as kitchen shelters. Now let's talk about tables. For most of my camping life, I just relied upon whatever picnic table happened to be in the campsite. After setting up my tent and kitchen canopy, I just drug the table to whatever spot I wanted it, set up the kitchen on one end, and used the other end for eating and working on projects. This was a fairly good system, but at least uh, one out of every three times there was some kind of a problem. Sometimes the table was too small and didn't have enough surface space to do all my work. Sometimes it was too heavy for me and Ava to move by ourselves. Sometimes it was chained to the ground and couldn't be moved. Sometimes it was made of concrete and couldn't be moved. And on two occasions that I can remember, there was no table. And so about 15 years ago, I decided to start packing a table for camping. The first table that I bought was this REI roll top table, and it has been a great one. I like to use it as my prep table when I'm grilling, and Ava likes to use it to wash dishes. We have frequently used it for afternoon picnics, and frequently we use it to set up our camp stove. After using the roll top table for a while, we realized that we needed more tabletop counter space and so I built this five foot tabletop and use adjustable height sawhorses to set it up. But the wooden table and the sawhorses were too heavy and too difficult to move and so I bought a composite five foot table. But after a short time I realized that two four foot tables would be much easier to pack and manage in the campsite. We usually pack three tablecloths for covering these tables and on one table, we turn milk crates that we use to pack our kitchenware on their sides and add a top shelf for organizing our kitchen area. And we use homemade table leg extenders to raise the height of this table to a countertop height of 36 inches. About a year ago, I decided to add a steel camp chef general purpose Dutch oven table so that we can cook on our Dutch oven and on our woody folding camp stove. This is how our kitchen looks when it's set up. Although the tables are small enough to pack inside the car, our car is usually filled with other camping gear and so we usually pack the tables on top. Now let's talk about stoves. Almost every developed front country campground 
offers fire rings in their campsites, and some of these fire rings have adjustable height cooking grates that can be used to easily cook campfire meals. Furthermore, a few campgrounds even offer nice pedestal grills which make a great campfire cooking platform. But in many campgrounds, the fire ring is poorly designed for cooking campfire meals. And in other campgrounds, the firewood doesn't burn hot enough to cook meals. And so every camping family needs to pack a backup stove. I have used a Coleman camp stove for most of my 53 years of camping experience. I used a white gas stove for about 35 years, but I've converted over to the propane stove and really like it. About five years ago, I developed this woody folding camp stove and now use it whenever we want to cook with a wood fire. It sits on our steel Dutch oven table. Now let me describe our pots and pans. At a minimum, you need two or three pots that nest together and a frying pan. In the early years, I cut the handles off of old pots and pans from my kitchen and then started using lightweight aluminum backpacker nesting pots and pans. But about five years ago, we became more concerned about problems with aluminum cookware. For example, uh, they were difficult to simmer foods in for long periods of time. They warped easily. They sometimes were difficult to clean. And most important, they may have some health risk, especially aluminum pots and pans coated with Teflon. And so we discarded all of our aluminum and now only use stainless steel, enameled steel, and cast iron cookware. This is a 5-quart GSI enamel pot, and this is a Pathfinder 2-quart stainless steel bush pot. We use a number 6 unmarked Wagner skillet as our camp frying pan. And we have a small cast iron Dutch oven with a flat bottom and a flat lid that we use for boiling beans and other foods, plus baking breads, casseroles, and desserts. We pack all of this cookware plus a few utensils into one milk crate and then use this milk crate in the campsite as a storage cupboard. To cook a wide range of delicious camp meals, you'll need a few carefully chosen utensils. Most importantly, you'll need a pair of tongs, a lighter, and a can opener. We especially like this shorty lighter and this Nogin French can opener. You'll need a spatula and some cooking spoons. We especially like wood and bamboo. And we store our utensils in empty food packaging cans, which could be used as bowls if necessary. For cutting foods, I prefer the French Openel knives on the left, but Ava likes the little utility knife. We also have one table knife that we use primarily for spreading butter and a potato peeler. Other utensils include a cutting board, a small grater, two telescoping a marshmallow forks, a pot holder, and some dishwashing supplies. Whoops, I almost forgot to include our aluminum measuring cup with a handle removed, even though it is one of our essential pieces of equipment. We pack all of these utensils into a milk crate along with our plates, bowls, and cups. Our dinnerware items are pretty simple. We use 9-inch stainless steel pie pans for both plates and bowls. We have two large cups and two more empty food packaging containers that we can use for cereal and other wet foods. And we have four more glasses that can be used either for hot or cold beverages that nest inside the two large cups. For flatware, We've tried plastic, but we don't like it, and so we use stainless steel utensils that we bought in a flea market. 
We repackage most of our food items into small plastic jars and then pack these food jars into two milk crates. Non-perishable food items such as flour, pancake mix, rice, cornmeal, pasta, dried beans, sugar, raisins, snacks, and a few canned goods are packed in one milk crate. And semi-perishable foods such as fresh fruit and vegetables, bread, and snacks are packed in a second milk crate. A few spices are packed wherever we can find room. We pack our perishable foods in this Coleman Extreme 52 quart cooler with an aftermarket igloo dry food basket. We like this cooler because it only costs about $60. It's small enough to pack into our car easily and when we load it on Thursday night with our food and about 20 pounds of ice, we will still throw ice away Sunday night after our camping trip. We pack our cooler and all of our food in the back of our car and leave it there for the entire length of our trip to avoid animal scavenger problems. Many campers like large five gallon water storage containers, but we have found them to be heavy and awkward to use. And so we pack several smaller water containers. In particular, we pack two one gallon ocean spray juice jugs, one for our food prep area and the other for the dishwashing area. And we pack two personal size water bottles for each person. One goes with us wherever we go during the day and the other stays in the tent so that it's handy when we need to take our medicine or take a sip of water during the night. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you've learned something that you might be able to use to make your camp kitchen a little more efficient. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping. For more information about camp kitchens and other camping equipment, please subscribe to this channel for future videos. Visit my website and watch this second video. Thanks for watching.